There is another interactive figure here showing a different function and the idea of a left and right hand limit. So I'm going to open that up. And I've, I've taken the slider, it's up here on the left, and I've moved it all the way to the left. And so we've got this function here, it's a rational function, and we're going to approach 2 from both the left and the right, but this has a nicer visual than what I can draw. And so as we slide our x value towards 2, right, look at the x-axis first, and you see my x value is getting closer and closer to 2. At the same time, you get a nice visual on what's happening to the y value. And so as x approaches 2 from the left, the y value, or the function value, is approaching 3. Now we can also move this from the right, and we'll do the same thing. So now my x value right now is around 3. As I slide my x and I let it approach 2 from the right, you can see that the y value is approaching 3. All right. Feel free to play around with these. They are, you know, the links are there in your documents. And if you hit control click, um, you can get them to open. I also, you know, when you first open it, it's quite small and you can change the, you know, the change the zoom on it. I like to go to 200 so I can see it. All right. So in the first scenario on the last page, we looked at the graph of a function that that had a hole in it. And here we're going to look at a function that has a jump. And this generally happens when you have piecewise functions. And so if you look up top at this piecewise function, we're going to do three variations of this, basically changing whether you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So we'll look at the first scenario. This is a piecewise function. It's 3 to the x if x is less than x and that is an exponential function and it's the, just the f of x equals 5 if x is greater than 1. So for less than 1 we have an exponential function, greater than 1 we have a constant function. And notice the open circles because there is there is not an equal sign in either of these. So pause the video and fill out what you think, and I would use pencil in case you make a mistake, but fill out and evaluate these limits and then turn the video back on. Okay, so the first one. We've got the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So as I let, as I let my x value approach 1 from the right, I'm on the constant function because that function is for values that are greater than 1. So if I'm coming from the right, I'm looking at this line, I'm also looking at this function. And so the y value I'm approaching is actually the same the whole time, it is 5. And then if I look the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, I am actually using the exponential function because that function is for values of x that are less than 1. So coming along the graph as x approaches 1 from the left, the y values are approaching 3. And I would also get that by substituting 1 right in. 3 to the 1 is equal to 3. Now the third is the limit as x approaches 1. Now that is a two-sided limit, and a two-sided limit only exists if the one-sided limits are the same, and since they are different, we have to write does not exist f of 1, since there is no function value at 1, then f of 1 does not exist. Okay. Let's try the second scenario. I'll have you pause the video again and evaluate those limits and the function value and turn the video back on. All right, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right I'm approaching 1 from the right, that is still the constant function, and so that would be 5. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left, I'm still using the exponential function coming from the left, and I'm approaching 3. Since the one-sided limits are different, the two-sided limit does not exist. 
The only difference in this scenario from the first is that f of 1 actually does exist because there's an equal sign there. So in order to find f of 1, we can pull it right off of the graph. It's right here. But also, we could just find it by putting 1 in to the 3 to the x. So 3 to the 1 is equal to 3. So f of 1 is actually equal to 3. The last scenario, again, change is subtle. The difference is that the equal sign is now with the greater than. And so we'll take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. That means I'm looking at the constant function. As I approach 1 from the right, the limit is 5. As I approach 1 from the left, the limit is 3. Again, the two-sided limit doesn't exist because the one-sided limits are different. And in this case, f of 1 is actually equal to 5 because the equal sign belongs with the constant function. So that's just to give you kind of an idea of the difference between left side and right side, comparing it with the function values. And again, just stressing that not only does the limit not have to equal the function value, there doesn't even have to be a function value at C. Let's look at part C where we're finding a limit from a graph that involves infinity. We've got the graph of f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. Basically that's the graph of 1 over x shifted to the right two units. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And let's evaluate the limits over here on the right. Actually, it's a good idea if you pause, again, pause the video and just give it a try. See if you can answer these, you know, evaluate these limits without, without my going over them and then start the video up again. So when we're evaluating a limit, we are letting x approach some value and we're, we're trying to see what is actually happening to y. right? So the, the value of a limit is always the y value or the function value. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So as my x approaches 2 from the right, I'm trying to figure out what the y value is doing and the y values are getting larger and larger and it, that would keep going. There's a vertical asymptote there. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is actually infinity. Now since infinity technically does not exist. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right doesn't exist either. There's no finite value. In order for a limit to exist, there has to be a finite value. But if we can describe the behavior of the function by using infinity or positive infinity, we want to do that. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x, we say it equals infinity to describe a behavior. You can get a visual on that. I know that this is, function is growing without bound, even though the limit doesn't exist. As x approaches 2 from the right, this way, the y values are getting smaller and smaller. Again, you have a vertical asymptote. So they are going to negative infinity. Again, negative infinity doesn't exist. So technically, the limit doesn't exist. But any time I can describe the limit, I want to with either a finite number or with positive infinity or negative infinity. If, and I'm going to add something here, if I said the limit, if I wanted you to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, well, since from one side it's going to infinity and the other you're going to negative infinity, this is where you would, you would actually write does not exist. It doesn't exist and I can't describe it, so then I'm going to use DNE. Okay, let's look at the limit as x approaches infinity. we're now going to let x grow without bound. So as x gets really, really large, the y values are getting smaller and smaller, and you can see that there's a horizontal asymptote there. And so x is actually approaching, excuse me, f of x, the function values, are actually approaching 0. The limit as x approaches negative infinity, meaning I'm going to let my x values get extremely small, 
as x goes to negative infinity, the y value or the function value approaches the x-axis, which means it is approaching 0. So we've looked at some limits from graphs where the one-sided limits existed, but the two-sided limit didn't. We've looked at graphs where the two-sided limit existed because the one-sided limits were the same. And then we looked at, in this case, some scenarios where even though the limit didn't exist, I was able to describe it by writing infinity or negative infinity. So in the next video, we're going we're gonna to look at calculating a limit numerically. What we've just done is we've looked at graphs to evaluate limits.